Now, I am a Frankfurter, and, um, and Frankfurters tell dialectical stories. Um, some grand, some less grand. Mine in this very long book is pretty grand, uh, because it's from, it's, it's, it's from Jesus to Wendy Brown, basically. And, um, and uh, in, in, the, in the two hours that have been given to me for presenting some thoughts here, I, I can't possibly do justice um, to that. So what do I do? I, I try to uh, explain this, the dialectics about toleration that I see at work, and also try to address some of the challenges that Wendy, not just tonight, but in her work generally, uh, puts to me as, as I perceive them, because I think that I would not want to separate the issues as she has divided them between me, uh, a normative and conceptual analysis of toleration on the one hand, and an analysis of the discourse of toleration. I, I see these are different projects, but I see them as related. And I, they have to be related where we talk about politics and power, um, Republicans as I think we both are in some ways. Um, so, I, so what I would want to, to do is to show that um, there, is, there are more resources in that term, toleration, um, for, I think, political objectives that we share than I believe um, Wendy in her work is willing to, um, uh, to, to extract from it. Now, the dialectical story is basically, for me, an attempt to try to explain why not just today, some people believe toleration is a wonderful and magical world of living together peacefully and happily, while others think it's a terrible word signifying hierarchical structures, power and domination. Why is that? It's not that we have invented this. It has been like that for a long time. Think of Goethe saying that uh, tolerance is an insult and should lead to recognition, um, whereas Voltaire and Lessing praised toleration as a true sign of humankind. Now, before I explain this, I try to explain this difference. Uh, let me say some general words about what I think the, the concept of toleration is, is about. It's about, it's about three, it has three components. If you tolerate something, you must think it is wrong. Otherwise, you're either indifferent, you don't have an opinion about it, um, or you think it's interesting but strange. If you think it's interesting but strange, you wouldn't tolerate it, you would just be interested in learning more about it. For tolerance to come up, there has to be a second component, namely that of acceptance. You have to find reasons why the things you believe are wrong or bad have to be tolerated. And then there's a, a, a third set of reasons, namely reasons of rejection, where you say these beliefs or practices are bad to an extent that they cannot be tolerated. So that's where the famous limits of toleration lie. If you look at already these three components, you see that they harbor a number of problems. Um, and I think I agree with Wendy uh, in an analysis of some of them. Namely, um, um, take the objection component. People with some good reasons see racism as a form of intolerance. And I agree with Wendy that this is a this is a problematic way of, of, of looking at it uh, and looking at, at racism as a purely cultural phenomenon. And then you often hear people saying that others who are have prejudices against other races um, at the same time reproduce the notion of race in criticizing it, but that's one of the dialectics of, of using this language. And I think we agree here too. Then people say one should be tolerant of other races. Now that seems wrong because it would mean that you accept for a certain, in a certain way the objections that a racist has against other people and just ask him to have other reasons to be tolerant, that is not to act on his racist impulses. But the right, the right reaction doesn't seem to be to ask a racist to be tolerant. It, it, it is to fight his racism. And so in the, in the history of toleration, it has often been seen that tolerance isn't always the best reaction to intolerance. 